This is the member of U period, M period, A period, S period, S period. And you know what that stands for? That's the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. We have a lot of people that are involved with UMass, but that's not the college. That's the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. Yes, there is such a thing as a secret society. Uh, you probably have heard about other college secret societies, such as the one at Harvard, and uh, I think people know about that one and some of the others that might be around. But those are actually college students that are involved in a secret society, and then they're all finished by the time they graduate. This is uh, slightly different. It's... Uh, alumni that uh, kind of like to be uh, going back uh, to the campus and uh, kind of hang out over there and uh, do all kinds of activities. Uh, I'm going to be discussing some of those types of activities. We do get together at various locations around the area here. Uh, I do uh, not want to be discussing every location because uh, we want to keep things secret. But they're around the Amherst, Massachusetts area here because this is a group primarily the University of Massachusetts alumni from the Amherst, Massachusetts campus. Uh, and we do occasionally come to get together over here for various occasions. Halloween is one of those uh, occasions that we like to get together for. Turn back! There's danger ahead! Yes, and we do all kinds of activities that might be classified as dangerous, but we just like to get together because we're part of the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. Beware. No one goes there. Okay. Now, we know that people don't like to be around when the UMass Secret Society gets together because you'll never know what's going to happen. There could be really strange types of things. Yes, we are members of the alumni that show up on the University of Massachusetts campus, but uh, uh, most of the uh, people are not living in this area here. I happen to be in this area myself. Uh, I would say because of uh, various circumstances, and I did do all kinds of activities at the campus at uh, UMass in Amherst, and uh, some of those uh, activities were uh, a little bit unusual. Uh, we we kind of like to be doing uh, unusual activities because uh, we did those types of activities while we were students, and. Uh, a lot of times people can't really change their habits. Once they develop habits, it's kind of difficult uh, to uh, get rid of your habits. And we do all kinds of unusual types of activities. 
I know that some of us actually got naked and ran around the track naked like they did back in the 70s when the streakers were around. Yes, and I was there when the streakers were running around. And that was quite an unusual type of activity to see on the campus. That's my friend. He kind of helps me out in various situations because of the unusual nature of the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. Yes, and we do get together once in a while during the year at secret locations. because we do alternative activities. We like to go on campus and do alternative activities. Now, I did mention one of the activities that was done in the past, and that was uh, the streaking thing. But we actually set things up so that people would actually experience that mindset. For example, we have gone over to the Boyden building and have taken down some of the signs and women were actually going and taking their showers in the men's locker room by mistake. And men were coming in, going to the bathroom and wondering what was going on. They actually had to call the campus police. The police were discombobulated by the whole situation because of the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. of activities that might be classified as dangerous, but we just like to get together because we're part of the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. Because You'll never know what's going to happen. There could be really strange types of things. As a matter of fact, we might like to get together and have some magic mushrooms. Yes, we'll get together and we'll pass out some of those magic mushrooms and have uh, an alternative experience. Do you dare come closer? Yes, and we do all kinds of experiences because we did it while we were at UMass. Yes, the UMass Alumni Secret Society. They like to get together and reminisce about the good old days when we were sitting around and having unusual types of experiences. Now, the unusual experiences do vary from time to time, but we do like to do unusual types of experiences. Now, another experience that I kind of have been thinking about from the University of Massachusetts. I was there when people were dancing around naked at the pond. And this was sometime around 1970 when the counterculture 
was popular. That's why I have a picture of Jimi Hendrix, because we used to like to listen to Jimi Hendrix on our stereo systems. But nowadays, people don't actually do that. They listen to their phones. I think they're actually missing out on that big speaker experience because we had great big huge speakers that people would be sticking out the windows while people were streaking over at UMass. The streakers were out and about and the streakers did appear at certain times like Halloween. Now, there's nothing wrong with streaking. Uh, the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society has had a kind of a, a base from the counterculture. Now, the counterculture was uh, prevalent in the 60s and 70s and uh, started uh, dying out uh, as time went on. Uh, so uh, that's primarily that time period that I'm accustomed to. But of course, we do have people that are interested in the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society that did graduate in later years, but they, they do have a different mindset because I noticed that there is a generational difference in people's attitudes uh, certain attitudes are more likely in certain generations. Uh, I would say that I'm more anti-establishment. Uh, the establishment uh, has its good points and its bad points. Uh, I would say that the establishment uh, might be good for somebody that's looking to uh, become a member of the regular society. They want to become a member of the establishment, so they're not particularly interested in deviating like they did in the 60s and the 70s. The people in the 60s and 70s were uh, somewhat more partial to uh, doing alternative types of things. Now, the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society, we did grow up in that time period where people would be listening to stereo. Uh, they did drink alcohol uh, and they did uh, smoke marijuana. I don't think that they did uh, too many other types of drugs, but... Uh, you know, with the population, there's all kinds of uh, uh, people doing all kinds of things. Uh, uh, I myself uh, did not like alcohol because I related alcohol uh, to the establishment. Because everybody from, uh, from years and years ago drank alcohol and uh, the marijuana smokers were considered more counterculture. So... I, I'm kind of more partial to the marijuana smokers. And now it's interesting that marijuana is legal and vaping is illegal in Massachusetts. Can you believe that? You know, from years ago, you were arrested if you had marijuana. Now, who knows what's going to happen. If you're vaping, you might end up dead because they probably have a chemical mixture in the uh, vaping products. But if somebody has a gun and goes on a shooting spree, well, you know, what's going to happen? The police are going to be coming over and they're going to try to shoot the person with a gun. What if there's a whole pile of people with guns? What if it's a militia? What? If it's uh, terrorists, there's all kinds of things that are going on. I think that we might need to be getting our guns and hiding out in the woods. Who knows what's going to happen?
you know, if this society is anti-abortion, anti-gun, anti-nudists, anti-gay, you know, people are going to react. For every action, there's a reaction. People get all bent out of shape if they feel that they're being attacked, especially by the government. The government. It's supposed to be helping us, but in most cases, the government is causing problems. You know, people think that the government is going to help them out if they haven't got a job. Well, maybe you need to consult with the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. The secret society. It's just some guys having some fun. We like to get together and talk about things like they might be in the future. But who knows what's going to happen in the future. We might be having a police state if we haven't got it already. A police state and they're watching everything that you do. You walk around with the phone and they keep track of your every move. You're walking around telling people where you're going, what you're looking at. This is a surveillance on a grand scale. The grand scale surveillance. And we're doing it voluntarily. We're handing over our freedoms to the government. The government wants to know what you're doing. Especially if you're gonna go out running naked! Well, maybe people aren't running around naked anymore because that was a past experience from years ago when people didn't have anything to do. Now everybody's looking at their phone. They want to be looking to see what's going on. They especially want to get together and have some kind of a party. They like to party. This is a society. This is what the University of Massachusetts is doing. They're party people. They like to get together every weekend and have a party. Well, have they tried their magic mushrooms lately? I'm sure that the police would be interested if people are passing out magic mushrooms. You know, in this day and age, you never know who's really your friend. You may have a friend on Facebook, but Facebook is looking to have their own type of money. The Libra, I think it's called, and the government is concerned because they think they might be having illegal activities involved with the 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 money that Facebook is trying to create. Maybe we need to go to Facebook instead of the government for our money. We'll go to Facebook and we'll use their money instead of the government money. Because who knows, maybe the government might want to be keeping track of our money. Well, I'm pretty much getting kind of fed up with everything, and I guess it's time for me to kind of pack up and leave. But I just wanted to say it's a happy Halloween time. You need to kind of loosen up and get together with your friends and do the Halloween thing. 
and maybe you might even consider joining up with the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. We like to get together once in a while. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. We'll get together at various locations. I think that I can tell you one of the locations. We go to the Amherst, and this is, this is really a secret, but I'm going to tell you a secret. The Amherst Wastewater Treatment Plant, which is right next door, to the field over there, over there where they play their sports. There's a wastewater treatment plant, and there's a, a meeting place right inside there where we could gather inside and then go sauntering around campus. We get together over there, and we'll meet, and we'll make our plans what we're going to be doing. We especially like to get together on Halloween because it's a kind of a sacred holiday. We like to think of our people that have come and gone, such as Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix was one of our favorite people until he ended up dead. Well, what are we going to be doing about it? We can't really do a thing about the dead. But we do try to contact the dead because we have certain, uh, I would say, uh, inclinations to deal with the paranormal. The paranormal is in our midst, and we try to contact the spirit world. So that's one of the activities that's done for the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. And we're not really sure what happens when you die. There's all kinds of theories about it. People think that you don't actually die, but your spirit remains. But we don't have any proof of that. But I do know that I have seen spirits, and I think that the spirits are here amongst us at all times, that we are walking, but we can't see the spirits. The spirits are around. We can't do anything about it because the spirits are there and they just are keeping an eye on us. Now, I was talking to one of the local people here. I invited him to come over here to tell about his paranormal experience. He told me that he knew somebody that had died, and he was driving somewhere in New York, I think it was in the Bronx, and he decided to take a shortcut. So he went through... And there he saw this person that had died walking. He was pretty sure that was the guy that was that was walking there that actually died. He was almost positive. And then he found out later that three people were shot dead right nearby where he was located. So he thinks that the spirit was giving them a warning that there was bad things up ahead. He was giving him a warning. So, the spirits are here, and they're going to help us out. So you don't need to be afraid of the spirits. The spirits are there to help us out. Spirits are not really dangerous. They're just out and about, but they can't really do anything. You know, the spirits are just there, and if they make uh, some kind of manifestation 
It's probably a warning. You need to be concerned if you see a scare, because there might be something up ahead. You may need to turn back. You may need to get your gun out. You may need to do something. Who knows what's going to be lurking ahead? There could be, there could even be a policeman up ahead. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that are actually afraid of the police. The police will show up and people will be running away. And if they run away, the police feel that they could shoot them. This is what they like to do, the police. Well, that's not always true, but uh, in some instances it did happen. So you never know. That's why we need to have robots. The robots are going to be watching over us. Who knows? Maybe we'll have the robots in the next 10 years or so. We'll like to be having a robot instead of a person. There's all kinds of robots that could be doing all kinds of jobs. You know, uh, is your job something that could be replaced by a robot? You know, a robot could do all kinds of repetitious type of jobs. I can think of all kinds of jobs, for example, working in a burger place because they keep making burgers over and over and over again. And that could be replaced by a robot. So maybe in the future, when you go to your local burger place, you'll be able to have a burger made by a robot and not by a person. And that way, then you'll have the perfect burger. And let's think about this burger thing. I heard that the Impossible Burger is actually genetically engineered food. And who knows what that means? You might be getting some kind of bad reaction with genetically engineered food. But then it might have an advantage. It might be better than a regular burger. So we need to do a little more research here. But I think that the Impossible Burger might actually be coming in the future. I heard that we'll be having Impossible Chicken as well. Why, we'll probably not even have real food in the future. We'll have robots making Impossible Burgers and Impossible Chicken, and we'll be eating it like like animals. Turn back. There's danger ahead. So I say, hip hip hooray for the impossible burger, because it's genetically engineered food. It's food that might be better for your health. And who knows, you might be able to fight the police if they attack you, if you eat an impossible burger. But if you eat a regular burger, you might be worn out. You won't be able to fight the police. <laughs> Beware. No one goes there. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe even the Chinese might be coming over here and trying to fit in to the society and pick up all kinds of information from the United States so they can bring it back to China. Why, I'm sure that the Chinese 
would love to get all kinds of information, such as information about the Impossible Burger. They'll be able to feed people Impossible Burgers in China. Why, that's going to be like the next thing. It'll be something that they can create on their own. They won't need to be getting food from the United States anymore. I'm sure that all kinds of things are going to be happening in the future. We like to just get together the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society, and we like to talk about stuff like that. So, if you're interested in joining the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society, well, I say that you need to look it up on the internet. <laughs> well, see, it's a secret society. We're not on the internet, otherwise it would be secret. <laughs> I'm sure that if you use your phone and look up the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society, you'll be getting some kind of information, but it's probably information provided by the Chinese or the Russians. I'm sure that everything that you do on the phone is being checked out by not only our own government, but the government of China, the government of Russia, who knows what other countries are interested in our thoughts and ideas. They just want to come over and take over the United States. But we want to have our guns because... A gun in the hand is more valuable than the cop on the phone. Beware. No one goes there. And there are things that are coming, like uh, uh, the climate change. We do have problems with the climate. People are having issues where they live. They need to move because the climate is changing. There's floods. There's uh, problems with other things. I heard on National Public Radio today that the Mojave Desert has some kind of problem that they may be having an eight-rated earthquake. There was a, something that was in the news about... Uh, another earthquake area. They mentioned the Mojave Desert. So we have earthquakes, we have floods, we have uh, global warming, which is causing all kinds of problems in uh, the world. So we need to uh, kind of be thinking about some of these things that need to be done. The University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society wouldn't like to be passing on information, but a lot of times if you're not involved with a particular kind of agency, like a government agency, they're not really interested in other people's opinions. So I would say that a lot of times you would need to go out and protest, a protest like they did in the 60s that does cause some kind of reaction with the government. The government cannot deal with masses of people that are protesting. This was shown back in the 60s when people were protesting. And uh, one example was Kent State. I was at UMass when Kent State happened where they killed four students. Now, they made a song about that. But what happened was they canceled all the finals. I did not have to go to finals because of Kent State, that people were so upset about the actions 
of the national guard that they decided to cancel classes and and cancel the finals so that particular time i guess that was uh, at that time we did not have to take finals i think that might have been optional in some courses but uh that was the general policy that they were going to cancel it and so that was that particular time period i don't think that's ever happened uh, in recent history, as far as I know, that they cancel finals due to some kind of news event. But uh, that did happen back at that time when I was at UMass. Now, my experience at UMass was kind of varied. I did uh, I do all kinds of activities over there, but primarily... Uh, focused on doing my studies and what I was annoyed about was that you go through all this stuff that you have to be uh, studying and uh, then you may have difficulties getting a job because they only pick certain ones in a certain profession so you might be having training but you might not be able to get a job so I had experienced that situation I was unwilling to relocate and I stayed in this particular area here and I was not able to get a job in the field that I studied at the university now that's probably not unusual uh, if you stay in a certain spot uh, most people do want to relocate they'll relocate to where the jobs are and that's really not unusual one of my childhood friends uh, did become a, a professor and I think he uh, I think he was in three or four different states he went from one place to another he he worked in one state and then transferred to another state and then went to another state so he didn't seem to have any problem with that. I personally would not be willing to do that, to go from place to place. But uh, if you study a certain profession, I guess you're going to have to go where the jobs are. I did not follow that mindset, and I stayed in this area here. So there was limited opportunity for me, but I'm not saying that's going to be a general rule for everybody, but I would say that with thousands of people graduating every year that have just as much qualifications as other people, there's going to be limits on who's going to get a job and who's not going to get a job. They claim that if you have a good resume, you'll, you'll be more likely to get a job, or if you have a certain feel that you you have, you might be more likely to get a job. And in this day and age, there are lots of jobs, but that's probably in certain fields. I personally think that uh, be because I'm thinking about the future, that there's going to be more jobs in robots and robotics, because uh, most jobs in this day and age can be replaced by robots including the job that I personally have myself. I'm sure that a robot could do the job because it's a repetitious job. Now, this is probably something that's going to be happening in the next 50 years or so, maybe even sooner. So I would say robotics might be a good field to study, but then if you have too many people in that one field, they may not be able to find a job. So I don't really know what to do about that. You may have to be doing something similar to robotics, uh, but, uh, you know, there's all types of jobs that are coming in the future that we probably don't know about. You know, they'll be using drones, they'll be using uh, uh, autonomous vehicles that people are not driving, and they'll be needing mechanics for these uh, types of vehicles. There's going to be all kinds of uh, jobs in the future that may not exist at this time. 
So you might have to be thinking about the future when you are personally deciding what you are going to do with your life. Now, uh, I don't think that it's going to be a major problem to find a job uh, because most people do find a job eventually. I personally uh, did have an attitude that I did not like the idea of working eight hours a day on a job that I did not like. Now, I kind of stuck that in my mind and it kind of contaminated my thoughts that I said that, oh, eight hours, eight hours, that's kind of a long stretch. Uh, I was thinking it was like taking a class, say like you take an English class, which you may not particularly like, or a math class or something, and you're doing that class for eight hours a day. I mean, like, who's going to do that? I'm going to be taking math for eight hours a day? No way, Jose. I'm not going to do that. Unless, you know, they're going to be handing me big-time money. But I don't think that they're going to do that. I think that they're taking advantage of people and they're going to probably say that you work eight hours a day or else. Now, I know in China, uh, there's people that are working on computers and they call themselves the 996 group. They work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week working on computers. Now, what kind of stuff are they doing on the computers? I'm kind of wondering. I'm not sh sure exactly. I'm guessing they're doing something for China, and I'm guessing that China may have eventually a, a cyber attack on Western society because they have all these people working on the computers trying to develop cyber warfare. They're not creating video games for the population. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm pretty sure that the, the China is actually making plans for the future that they're going to attack. You know, the United States, we, we are vulnerable. And what's going to happen if nobody can use their cell phone or their computer because China did a cyber attack on the United States. We can't really stop that. You know, you, you think that the United States might be able to stop it, but in my opinion, I don't think that if you have thousands of people in China working on computers to do cyber warfare, and we might only have hundreds of people doing that in the U.S. government, trying to resist the cyber warfare, who's going to win, the people with thousands of people or the hundreds of people? There is no doubt in my mind that China is going to overcome and uh, win a cyber warfare attack on the United States. So I'm guessing that you may need to prepare for the future in case of national emergency because I'm pretty sure that places like China or Russia or some of these other countries are planning to attack the United States. The United States is vulnerable. If we don't have electricity, we can't run the United States. Everything's going to be closed down and people are going to not be able to function. It's going to be like Venezuela. People in Venezuela, they're digging up bodies to get gold from their teeth in order to get money because there's no jobs or anything in Venezuela. People are wanting to get out of the country. What's going to happen in the United States if there's no electricity? Are we going to be digging up bodies? Are we going to be trying to find some gold? See if we can find some gold teeth? Who knows what's going to happen? I'm saying that we better be prepared for the future. And I'm sure that electricity will be attacked sooner or later. You're not going to be able to use your smartphone. Oh, 
Heavens to Murgatroyd. You can't use your smartphone. You can't charge it up. You might be able to use a solar charger. Maybe people need to invest in those things. You need to plan for the future because there's going to be all kinds of things happening in the future. They said that, for example, uh, people between the ages of 10 and 27, there was a large increase, I think over 50% increase from the year 2007 to 2017, and uh, over 50% increase in suicides. And I blame that directly on the smartphone. I'm saying that people are probably doing stuff on the smartphone, getting people all bent out of shape, and they end up committing suicide because they can't deal with it. I say that you need to be living life without a smartphone as your primary form of existence. The smartphone is just a tool. It's not your primary way of living. You need to get yourself a life. You need to get somewhere. So I would say plan and get yourself a place and get your own weapons. You may need to have weapons in case China does a cyber warfare attack and then they're going to send thousands of soldiers to attack the United States. That's my thinking. I think that China is looking to become the one, number one nation in the world and they want to overcome the United States. So we're going to be number one on their list. So you need to prepare for this. If you're thinking that the U.S. government can repel the Chinese, I think you're living in the land of Oz because we do not have the capability of fighting off thousands of soldiers. We have certain capabilities at this time because we do have uh, up-to-date military equipment, but what's going to happen as time goes on, as time goes on, we may not be able to uh, update uh, the uh, technology. The technology is one of our things that we need in order to uh, deal with the future. So my advice to you is let's try to get together and uh, try to have a little get-together like the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. We'll get together and we'll discuss what we need to be doing. I say that it's time to go get yourself a place somewhere away from society, somewhere maybe like Alaska or something, and get yourself a place, get your weapon, uh, plan on uh, having solar or some other source of... Uh, uh, energy because there probably is not going to be any electricity and become a self-sufficient survivalist. That's what we need to be doing because uh, sooner or later we're going to be ending up having a, a, a battle with one of these countries and it's most likely China in my opinion. China is uh, looking to get you know, they want to get to be number one. And they're working, and they are actually, I think they're, they're getting there pretty quickly. So we have a big competition with China. China is going to be our primary, our primary enemy, but Russia does have uh, their issues too. But I think China is, is the bigger problem. And that's according to the National Public Radio. People do claim that China is, is, uh, is the uh, country that we probably need to be dealing with uh, in the future. So, unfortunately, I'm running out of time here. I'm going to be, uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, talking with my friend here and get some opinions about this. There's a lot of uh, opinions that I have, 
but I'm not going to express them all at once. But uh, the society, the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society is primarily one of those kind of uh, uh, societies where we get together and we might want to have a good time instead of discussing serious matters because there's nothing wrong with having a good time. But a lot of times uh, it's not really that easy to, to get away from it all. We need to go and hang out somewhere where there's no problems, no smartphones, nothing there. And most people can't do this. They're addicted to the smartphone, unfortunately. I don't happen to be one of those because I never carry a phone around with me. I don't want the government or any kind of private corporation keeping track of my every move. But most people are willing to sacrifice their freedom in order to have a phone. They want to they wanna do, uh, you know, the surveillance thing. They want to keep track of their population. They want to see if they're smoking pot or doing some other kinds of activities, and then they'll be uh, keeping track of all your contacts. So I would be careful what you do with your phone because the government does get information about your phone. And this is a perfect example. China uses the smartphone as their primary form of ID. If you get stopped by somebody, say a Chinese policeman, they want you to hand over your phone because that's your ID. And I heard about this in Egypt, as a matter of fact, today on the news, that uh, some student uh, that was over in Egypt got stopped by the police and they demanded that he hand over his phone. So they're checking their information on the phone. So be careful about your phone, especially if you go in another country. You're going to be asked to hand over your phone and anything that's in your phone can be used against you. Just like they used to say, anything that you say can be used against you. This is uh, now applying to the phone. Be careful about what you put on your phone. You Just think of it like this, that whatever you put on the phone, is that going to be something that's going to be acceptable by the police? If you have something that's unacceptable by the police on your phone, you may suffer the consequences. The consequences of information that might be on your phone could cause you to go to prison. It could cause you all kinds of costly legal fees. It could cost all kinds of problems. So. Try to limit what you put on your smartphone because if you put too much personal information on there and it's going to be taken by a policeman and they're going to be looking at your phone, I would say that be careful. This is the way things are in this day and age. You cannot put all kinds of information on your phone. So. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to get myself out of here because I need to uh, do some other types of activities. So I'm going to leave it at, at this that you need to pay attention to what you're doing, especially when it comes to the smartphone or the computer. So that's my advice. So. If you want to join the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society, you may want to look it up on the internet, but of course, you know, it's a secret society. It's not on the internet. You might see my interview here, but I'm not going to be discussing uh, the whereabouts of the secret society. The secret society goes in various locations and we don't like to use smartphones and computers to discuss our whereabouts because we don't want people looking and seeing what's going on. That's exactly what they want you to do. So be careful. 
And be careful as you go through life in these troubled times. Well, I think I've had enough for the Halloween spectacular here. I was going to have some other people come over here, but they were actually afraid to come over here because I'm part of the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. Alrighty, well, we hope that you had enjoyed listening to some strange ideas about the future. Who knows what's going to be happening? We'll probably be having genetically engineered food. We'll have ectogenesis. We'll have self-driving cars. We'll have birds that are talking. We'll be having police that are running around naked. Who knows what's going to be happening in the future. But in the meantime, we hope that you have a happy Halloween and make sure that you have your mask on before you do any kind of strange type of activity, especially if you want to get together with the University of Massachusetts Alumni Secret Society. Have a good day and a good night.